Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Laurie. I wrote the play. Um, I started writing it because my sister is a chef. Uh, and I think she's always thought I was a bit of a massive weirdo working in the arts. Um, but we realized that there's more in common um, with our work than we thought. Um, and I started writing this after she said to me, we were talking about the Me Too movement and Harvey Weinstein. And my sister said to me that um, it's never gonna come out in chefing. So I wrote this play. Um, and where we're at in the play, we have A, who's from the North, is a premier chef de party, and B, who's from London, who's just started in the kitchen, um, which is a high-end Michelin restaurant in London. Um, and this is about a week into B working in the kitchen. Um, my scenes are a lot shorter, so it jumps between different scenes. And when they're together, it's always in the kitchen. Um, but then there are scenes when they talk to the audience, um, which was reflecting the fact that I um, undertook interviews, uh, interviewed a lot of chefs to write this play. So it's kind of like they're responding to questions. Um, yeah, I'll hand over to the actors. Shall I take these to Tony? Hey. To Tony, start a service. Who the fuck is Tony? The other CDP? That's Damien. Oh man, I'm crap with names. By the end of the week, I'll have it down. Tony? Don't tell him. Why? I think I thought Tony because, you know, because he's Italian. Sorry, what? You know. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Are you trying to do the Godfather? Oh God, I don't want him to piss him off already. You've been here a week. How do you not know people's names? I'm bad with them. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Shut up. I made up with that. Next time he calls me tampon. Hey, Tony, why don't you shut your mouth, huh? <laughs> tampon? Yeah, because I'm white all over and red on top. Uh, is he all right? Who else do you still not know the names of? Oh, I probably got most. I reckon, probably. Mm, don't lie. Okay, fine. I don't know the name of this one. Oh, that's a... Uh, oh. You know, he's the... No, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, do that again. <laughs> That's a really good impression. You haven't even guessed it yet. John Claude, 100% sous chef. That's the one. That was spooky good. I'm good at paying attention. I'm just shit with names. Yeah, no shit. Do someone else then. No way. You're going to drop me in it. Oh, come on. We've got everything ready for service. Next one, next one. Come on. Well, come on. Joe will be back from his fag in a minute. Yeah, like the others won't kill me too. Fine. Go ahead. The stage is yours. Nah. So this babes, yeah, she was all up in my sheets and she was singing my name, bruv. No lie. <laughs> Kai. <laughs> You better get used to that. There's a Kai sex saga every week. You do one. No way. It's only fair. Oh, okay. Um, you're right, darling. How's it going? You're right. You're right. Yeah. Not getting it. Oh. Um. Okay. All right, yeah, so, yeah, when I own my own place, yeah, I'm not going to have you girls in it. No offence, like, you're cool and everything, and I respect chef's decision, right? But, yeah, I'm not going to have any chefs with tits in the kitchen because it's well distracting. What's this face? Call me chef, Michael. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. You said that the first week of him working here. Dickhead. To be fair to him, he'd never worked in a kitchen with a girl before especially not one who's had to ask for help every other service and I think he'd snorted a fair bit of one out. Okay so Joe and you obviously head chef, Jean-Claude sous chef, 
What's Tony's name again? Damien, chef de pate. Kai, junior sous. Michael, commie chef. What's the posh one? Walt, he's CDP like you, and don't let him make you think otherwise. I'm the only premier chef de pate, pal. He's got all the techniques, but he's got crap kitchen manner. I think it's because he spent years on a fancy course that he's all that. One of the city boys? Yeah, it's happening more and more. Weird. I can't imagine being on Wall Street or whatever our version is and then being like, nah, I'm going to be a chef. Isn't it? At Eco, we had a few of them. Uh, a lot of ex-musicians too. Really? Yeah, a lot of drummers. Don't know what that's about. Using your hands, I guess. Yeah, I can get that. I just can't stand the people who've done like one fancy course and think you can just waltz into a kitchen. We've had loads of new starters past couple of months. Some last a trial, some a few weeks, but we just can't hack it. Here's hoping I last longer. Well, maybe if Tony doesn't kill you first. <laughs> oh, that's Joe. How many covers tonight? 75. Feel ready? It's gonna start raining tickets like three, two, one. I only cried once at my last job. Because work, I mean. And it wasn't a woe is me cry, and it definitely wasn't a camera worthy, tear rolling down the cheek, highlighting my perfect mascara cry either. It was an angry cry. A, a cry because you're frustrated. The cry that builds up behind your eyeballs and comes out like a load of angry toddlers smashing their way down your cheeks. <sighs> I call it the Anna Wintour cry. Not because I look like something from a high-end fashion magazine. I'm actually a very ugly crier. <sighs> no. The Anna Wintour cry got its name because after six months of tear-free work in my last job, I encounter Anna Wintour and her fucking pigeon. <sighs> I don't rate a lot of game meat as it is. It's weird that the least posh of birds, the rats with wings, that's what the head of a huge fashion magazine orders. And just like her models, Anna Wintour likes her pigeon perfect. I was coming off the back of an eight day slog because we were understaffed. I'd rate it to about like kind of a boring to all right shift. Then suddenly the whole restaurant's a flutter with this ticket, this ticket's Anna Wintour's. Now, telling you this, you've got to understand, it wasn't my job to cook the fucking pigeon. I was on the garnishes. I was meant to be adding a delicious sprinkling of gerbs. That's mini herbs. Right, well, yeah, it's called gerbs because, well, look, it's just universally called, it's gay herbs, all right? Because they're delicate. D don't look yes i know it's offensive and fucking ridiculous that we're serving something we call gerbs to someone who works in the fashion industry of all places but look everyone calls them that even gary who worked there he used to call them that and it doesn't feel like well you know it's not meant to be it's just in the context of a kitchen you don't really think about those little look this fucking pigeon was not prepared right. I don't know what was wrong with it, because let me remind you, I'm not in charge of cooking the pigeon. I'm on garnishes and got uh, many herbs. The junior Sue, he fucked it. But we both got screamed at for an hour. There's no, let's fix it, no problem solving. It's just find the cause and stump on it until that person knows how shit they are. And you just got to take it. Even though we sorted it and she gets her perfect pigeon take too and is none the wiser. When, when I went for a piss, I just locked myself in a cubicle and opened my mouth in a silent scream like. <sighs> but that was the only time in the, that kitchen. 
which is pretty good comparably. I'll be yours then, yeah, Michael. Waste man. Well, here's us a pint. I'm not sure I can be arsed joining them tonight. Knackered. Did you ever wish there was more of us? Of course I fucking do. I've been doing three people's jobs for months now. Don't bother whinging to Joe about it, you know. He's been trying to hire for ages. That last guy you brought in. Oh, fuck me. He was useless. Exactly. You're the first one for ages to last longer than a month. Never mind more than two. At Echo, there was, there was a new person through the door every couple of weeks. One got fired on the first day for being two minutes late, which is... Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, there's no excuse for that. Not everyone can hack it. That's not what I meant, though. I mean, more of us. More women. Why? Well, there'd be more than you or me to look at when someone gets pissed off at a burnt steak and says, oh, I'm going to fucking rape someone. <laughs> you know Michael never actually would. Obviously. Well, I just wish I didn't have to give him a, my nod of approval. I guess. Not going to lie, I wasn't sure when you walked in. Uh, yeah, you made it clear. I oh, don't take it personal. I didn't warn to Maria at first, so now she's the only one I still talk to from that kitchen. But yeah, I genuinely thought, oh fuck, it's a woman. Worried I'd show, up, show you up with my superior talent? Oh, get in the bin. <laughs> I was just worried you'd be one of those girls, you know? Those girls? Yeah, like, there's two types. There's me and you, get the job fucking done boss it and then there's those girls who are just well shit can't keep up yeah or they ask someone to carry something for them fucking flutter their eyelashes proves the point to all of them none of these lads would dare look at you that way not seriously anyway you're scary you're scarier than you look <laughs> and they know it well you know when that marco pierre white thing went out about why women shouldn't be chefs. Yeah, I read that. Well, Joe said something on his Insta story like, oh, fuck this, the best chefs I've worked with have been women, which was the best compliment he's ever given me. He said you. Oh, did he fuck? But I knew it. <laughs> he's the only head chef I've had who makes me think I can really do it. <laughs> but he's pissing off to Sweden in a couple of months, the absolute bell end. Yeah. Show's cool, but like, imagine if the head, no, the exec chef was a woman. Have you ever worked for a female head chef? No. Well, how would you know it would be better then? Have you? No. I just think at least be good to know what it's like. You know about Georgia Mason? Of course. She's one of the best chefs in the country right now. In the world. But do you know what she's done to people? I've heard the rumours. Doesn't mean they're all true. Or that one female chef being a mad ogre means another one would be. She could be the evil exception, just like Joe is the, the exception in a sea of macho gammon. I just think it could be nice. You're too soft sometimes. You don't have to be like that, though, to be a head chef. Don't you? I hope not. There's some men who aren't. It's not the only way to. You listen to what I tell you during the mise en place and service, don't you? Because I know my shit. Yeah. Well, even this lot, like I'd say to most of them, they're like brothers now. Big or little brothers, depending on how needy they are. <laughs> I give advice. Solid advice, but Joe has to back me up every time. He has to say, fucking listen to her because she knows what she's on about. Yeah. And it's not about my baby face because Joe looks about two. So maybe to get there where she is, she had to knock a couple of people out. You don't mean that. Of course I don't fucking mean that. 
no one should knock someone out for fucking overcooking a piece of foie gras. But you know what I mean. Well, what about Dominique Cran? What about her? Three Michelin stars? And all the chefs shaved their heads when she got cancer. If that's not a sign of massive respect, then I don't know what. Well, well, she's the anomaly. And that just feels like a really American lovely thing to do. You don't think that. Your heart is not that cold. Well, what makes you think you'd be any good at running the kitchen anyway? I wasn't thinking about me. Not somewhere like this anyway. I meant you. There hasn't even been a female sous in this kitchen. I'm fully aware, mate, thanks. You could practically do it now. Maybe. Promotions are slower, though. Yeah, but if Jean-Claude gets head chef, you'd be up for ju Junior Sue, putting you well on your way. Don't pretend you haven't thought about it. We've got to focus on defending the staff for now. That's the order from top. Oi, what did you mean, not somewhere like this? Somewhere French. Chill. Well, I kind of have worked with a female head chef. I did some stages when I was starting out in my first few months at Allison at different restaurants. Laura Allen's heirs was the sous, but basically one in the kitchen at Morello was because the head chef, who was on the brink of retiring or something, I kind of thought we'd have this big female bonding moment. Like the Star Wars use the force convo. <laughs> well, she took me aside and I thought, oh, this is it. And she said, she said, there's only two real pieces of advice I have for you. Number one, see those steaks? And she's full on gotten, got them all set out and everything, right? Flank steak, skirt steak, mostly interchangeable in recipes, similar structures. Now, let's say that flank steak is your head chef at Allison Street. And that flank steak is him. Cut from below the belly, it's tough. It's got a good flavour. Marinated. Helps it tenderise. It's a good steak. Top quality. And I'm thinking, where is she going? <laughs> and she says, flank thinks it's tough. And it is. But skirt steak has more tough muscles, right? Skirt steak has more flavour. It takes to marinate quicker and much quicker than a flank steak. And I'm like, should I be writing this down or what? And she goes, I am the fucking skirt steak and I will take down any chef that answers me back and doesn't follow orders in my kitchen. The KPs have probably got a bet going on who will fuck you by Christmas. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. And then slam dunk. Now don't tear up on me because the things, these things bring to me are my second piece of advice. Number two, if you're gonna fucking cry, get some onions. There's 120 pounds of red onions waiting. And I suggest you get started and get that out of your system. Wow. Onions. Okay. <laughs> Everyone I know just hides in the fridge when they want to have a little cry. Max was saying that. I thought you knew about my sacred crying fridge. You know what I mean. It's calm. It's kind of why I've stuck out here this long. It'd be cool to be the first one. Just don't tell any of them. No matter how many pints Kai gets in. Don't come in. Don't need me to do some extra shifts so I don't have a day off one of the six days. I gotta sleep. I'm not in the mood for getting on it. See yourself. Well go on. Peace off, I'll sort this out. You sure? Yeah, have fun. Alright. Bye then, wolf. <laughs> <laughs>